Hello friends. So the topic for today is inferior alveolar nerve block, guided by Dr. Bhushan Bhagat sir. So what is inferior alveolar nerve block? Inferior alveolar nerve block is commonly but inaccurately referred to as the mandibular nerve block, and is the second most frequently used technique after infiltration, and possibly the most important injection technique in dentistry. Unfortunately, it also proves to be the most frustrating. with highest percentage of clinical failures even when administered properly so what are the learning objectives today the nerves anesthetized we'll get to know about the anatomical landmarks areas anesthetized indications and contraindications advantages and disadvantages technique and final position of the needle the signs and symptoms complications so the inferior alveolar nerve it arises from the mandibular nerve that is from the posterior division of the mandibular nerve the nerves anesthetized are inferior alveolar nerve mental nerve incisive nerve and sometimes the lingual and the buccinator nerve the anatomical landmarks are mucobuccal fold anterior border of ramus of the mandible external oblique ridge retromolar triangle internal oblique ridge pterygomandibular ligament buccal sucking pad and terigo mandibular space so as you can see the landmarks here the coronoid notch the terigo mandibular raphe the occlusal plane of the mandibular posterior teeth the areas anesthetized are mandibular teeth to the midline body of the mandible inferior portion of the ramus buccal mucoperiosteum mucous membrane anterior to the mandibular first molar anterior two thirds of the tongue and floor of the oral cavity if the lingual nerve is anesthetized so what are the indications procedures on multiple mandibular teeth in one quadrant so it is also used for quadrant dentistry and this is an important point when buccal soft tissue anesthesia is necessary endodontic therapy in multiple teeth the contraindications are infection or acute inflammation in the area of injection patients who are likely to bite their lip or tongue the advantages are wide area of anesthesia disadvantages wide area of anesthesia not indicated for local procedures rate of inadequate anesthesia intraoral landmarks not consistently reliable and positive aspiration lingual and lower lip anesthesia discomforting to many patients and possibly dangerous for certain individuals partial anesthesia possible where a bifid inferior alveolar nerve and a bifid mandibular canals are present cross innervation in lower anterior region so the needle pathway during insertion the needle passes through the mucosa a thin plate of the buccinator muscle loose connective tissue and a variable amount of fat so approximating structures when the needle is in position that is the final position of the needle the needle should be superior to the following the inferior alveolar nerve and vessels insertion of the internal pterygoid muscle mylohyoid nerve and vessels anterior to the deep part of the parotid gland medial to the inner ramus of the mandible and lateral to lingual nerve internal pterygoid muscle and the sphenomandibular ligament so what is the technique assume the correct position for a right iamb a right handed administrator should sit at the 8 o'clock position facing the patient for a left iamb a right handed administrator should sit at the 10 o'clock position facing in the same direction as the patient the position of the patient supine that is highly recommended or semi supine if necessary the mouth should be opened wide to allow greater visibility of and access to the injection site for right iamb the operator stands to the right front side of the patient and with the left index finger or thumb palpates the mucobuccal fold the finger is then moved posteriorly until the contact is made with the external oblique ridge on the anterior border of the ramus then the finger is moved up and down until the greatest depth of the anterior border of the ramus is identified this area is the coronoid notch 
the palpating finger is moved lingually across the retromolar triangle and onto the internal oblique ridge. The finger or the thumb is still in line with the coronoid notch and is moved to the buccal side, taking with it the buccal sucking pad, giving better exposure to the internal oblique ridge, pterygomandibular raphe and the pterygomandibular depression. When palpating the intraoral landmarks with the thumb, the operator may place the index finger extraorally behind the ramus of the mandible, thus literally holding the mandible between the thumb and the index finger. In this manner, the anterior posterior width of the ramus may be assessed. A syringe with a 25 gauge needle is inserted parallel to the occlusal plane of the mandibular teeth from the opposite side of the mouth at a level bisecting the finger or thumbnail, penetrating the pterygomandibular depression. One can determine the depth of the needle penetration by estimating when the needle tip has been advanced half the distance between the palpating left thumb and the index finger. The needle is penetrated until the bone is contacted on the internal surface of the ramus. This should be in the area of the mandibular sulcus which funnels into the mandibular foramen. The needle is then withdrawn about 1 mm and 1 to 1.8 ml of solution is deposited slowly. The needle is now withdrawn slowly and when about one half of its inserted depth has been withdrawn, the remainder of the solution is injected in this area to anesthetize the lingual nerve. In many instances, the deliberate injection of the anesthetic solution to anesthetize the lingual nerve is unnecessary because diffusion of the initially injected solution will also anesthetize the lingual nerve. It takes roughly about 5 minutes for the LA to act. The tongue, teeth, chin and most of the gingiva on the ipsilateral side are now anesthetized. Full anesthesia of the mandibular gingiva also requires a buccal nerve block. You can see how the injection is being given from the contralateral side. This is the anterior posterior width as shown in the diagram and the site of injection. So what are the signs and symptoms? There are subjective and objective. Tingling or numbness of the lower lip indicates anesthesia of the mental nerve, a terminal branch of the inferior alveolar nerve. This is a good indication that the IAN is anesthetized, although it is not a reliable indicator of the depth of anesthesia. Soft tissue anesthesia is never a guarantee of pulpal anesthesia. Tingling or numbness of the tongue indicates anesthesia of the lingual nerve, a branch of the posterior division of V3. It usually accompanies IANB but may be present without anesthesia of the inferior alveolar nerve. The objective symptoms Instrumentation necessary to demonstrate absence of pain sensation and no pain is felt during dental therapy. What are the complications? Hematoma which is rare Swelling of tissues on the medial side of the mandibular ramus after deposition of the anesthetic solution the management, apply pressure to the area for minimum of 3 to 5 minutes. Trismus, muscle soreness or limited opening of the mandible. A slight degree of soreness when opening the mandible is extremely common after IANB. Most severe soreness associated with limited mandibular opening is rare. The third, transient facial paralysis of facial nerve anesthesia produced by the deposition of the local anesthetic into the body of the parotid gland blocking cranial nerve that is the facial nerve a motor nerve to the muscles for facial expression signs and symptoms include an inability to close the lower eyelid and drooping of the upper lip on the affected side so a question for y'all what are the delayed complications of IANB Thank you.